putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. I think this is a question where um, we have a Republican Party with a serious morality problem right now. And I just, I want to name it. I mean, we've got a party that is saying, Neil Gorsuch is one thing. I testified it against his nomination. If, if that was what was able uh, to be compelling to you, Hugh, to let Trump's uh, indiscretions and abuse of power go, fine. We're talking about Roy Moore as a pretty much everyone acknowledges that they're credible, there's credible evidence that he was a child molester. And the reason why Kellyanne Conway and other members of the Republican infrastructure are saying we have to let this man walk into the Senate is so that we can cut taxes on the rich. Welcome back, everybody. That was some black chick on, um, what was it? MS, uh, I can't remember the show, but can you believe it? The GOP has a morality problem. Yeah, so does the world, okay? The world has a morality problem. We all do. The question is, who deals with their morality problems? Does the left? I mean, let's think about the leftist, hardcore leftist. Who's got more pictures with Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Barack and Michelle Obama, Harvey Weinstein, or Donald Trump? Name any Republican who's got the morality issues of any of the people that we've talked about on the left, whether we're talking about Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, Al Franken, who, by the way, I don't see his as as, as big a deal as most people, John Conyers and Teddy Kennedy. Look, don't even get people opening up the Komodo on the left and what they do. This $17 million we spent on sexual harassment that our taxpayer money went to, we, there should be no reason on God's green earth we can demand to see who's been paid and, and for what reasons. And hey, I'm going to make you a bet. If we ever get to see that list, you're going to see a long list of Democrats. It's going to shock you. You're going to see some Republicans too, but you're going to see a lot of Democrats, many more. The left know this. Paul Ryan, who could release the list, he knows it. It isn't because it's going to condemn a bunch of GOPers, which for the record, I don't care. See, that's the difference between us and them. Showcase it. Show it all. I don't care who it cat ensnares. That's the de- definition of being a, a conservative is that you're saying doesn't matter to me. Right is right. Show the taxpayers why we had to pay for somebody else's indulgences. For their peccadillos. And I want my money back. But anyway, that's a crazy lady saying the GOP has a problem. Then she goes to the two people who where there is not in one iota of of credible evidence. Donald Trump mentions grabbing women by the you know what? She knows that's legit. She knows it. You think she's going to admit that? Of course not. Uh, uh, Roy Moore. 35, 40 year old allegations. And she acts like it's breaking news. And he's been sexting with young teenage girls, like say in Anthony Weiner. I mean, these people are incredible. I'm going to go on. And there was a panel on sexual harassment. Uh, Koki Roberts was in it. And here's what she had to say. And uh, she alludes to this being Conyers that the people ran with it as was Conyers, but it doesn't really say it was him per se. But she's talking about being on the Hill and what happens. Anyway, here's the clip. And what about Conyers and Franklin? Right. Now, things happen since. What what happens to them? It's not clear that any Democrats so far have said they should resign. You saw Kathleen Rice. Other than that, you haven't seen a lot of them. I, I'm curious. My my question of this whole process is, is saying it should go to the Ethics Committee a real thing, or is it just a stalling <laughs> tactic? And that's what we don't know yet. They've set up a process, but does the process matter, and is the process going to lead? Like, it's hard for me to see like the rehab, Conyers you know? thing He's going to anything rehab. other than the, you know, the obvious. We know what happened, essentially. So does that lead to a resignation or does that just lead to a stalling process? And that's what I don't know yet. And can they weather the storm, right? right because one of these happens, another one happens. And if it just becomes noise, then maybe they can hang on. And, you know, they, they are so used to it. I mean, the culture of Capitol Hill for so many decades was men being bad. So, so we, we talk <laughs> about that. We've talked, you know, we talk about it uh, weeks and weeks. But does anything really change? No. We ask that question. I mean, it's it's this seems unprecedented. How many? But do you think people are really talking about it 
as if things will change. I mean, I really don't think that the culture has, we haven't seen some major shift, right? And I would also just point out members policing themselves, they have a very <laughs> bad track record of it, and whether it's about these kinds of scandals, whether it's about how they use their finances. There is not, nobody is saying that they're going to change the whole process with which this is done, that they're going to throw out members if they actually have sexual harassment cases. But you know, these are, this is a big problem it, for The them. fact that people are willing to be public can change things. I mean, we all talked about for years. A little bit at a time. Right. You know, don't get in the elevator with him, you know, and the whole every female in the press corps knew that. Right. Don't get in the elevator with him. Now people are saying it out loud. And I think that does make it. That is a change. Don't get in the elevator with him. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. KJRadio.com. So the left, they know. They, they know all the things that they do. It's like I tell you, folks, it's in plain sight. I don't know how much. I can school you on the idea that the left hide nothing. They tell you I'm a lecherous person who will take advantage of you in any way that I can. Oh, by the way, have you seen my charity that protects me from being a lecherous person who will take advantage of anything that I can? So if you say uh, I want to take advantage of women and get them on my, you know, my couch or you know, sexually abuse them in any way, then, hey, let me introduce you to my charity where I help women of sexual abuse. If you tell me that a guy, you know, is into pedophilia, I'll show you a leftist coach. He's going to be. That's why people are like, hey, it was it was my son's coach that did it. And they're, they're always surprised. He's a coach. And I go, yeah, but did you check his political ideology? He's a leftist. And so he's he's at the place where he can indulge himself the most. A person on the right, if I coach kids, it's because I love kids. I want to see them perform and I want to see their lives change. I want to see them use sports as a as a metaphor for life and go out and conquer. I don't go be around kids because I have a fetish for kids. That's what leftists do. It's like the guy that would say, yeah, you know, I find myself hanging around the sexual addiction clinic to help the young girls who have sexual addictions. Uh, yeah, really? <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. What are you talking about? That, that's what they do. And it's in your face. It, what, what amazes me, honestly, is how easy it is to spot this stuff. And it doesn't seem like we care. We know what Hollywood does. They they make movies about themselves. They even call themselves out in their own little award shows. We watched uh, Seth MacFarlane call out Harvey Weinstein a couple of times in the award shows. Yeah, well, at least you no longer have to, you know, uh, be in a present. Uh, pretend you like Harvey Weinstein. Things like this. He's not the only one. There's many of them. How uh, how quickly are they outing each other? Uma Thurman, she finally came out. She alluded over Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Every, happy Thanksgiving to every, everybody except Harvey Weinstein. Is he the only one, Uma? All these leftists, they, they, they've been walking around for years with all this weight on their shoulders as they drive their Ferraris and go to their big galas and eat at the fanciest restaurants and wear the nicest clothes and then moralize on you. Not fooling me. And now they're afraid. They're afraid of, of President Trump. They're afraid of what we've done, because as I said earlier in the broadcast, you've exposed them as liars. So is President Trump. Here's what Ed Henry had to say in an interview on that. Let's talk about some other names. And that is the fresh blood in the Democrat <laughs> Party. Uh, you may have seen this, the Hill reporting. The new fresh blood names at the top of the list, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Followed by more this new not blood, ironic. This Joe is Biden. Life. <laughs> Even more new blood, Elizabeth Warren. And then actually a new candidate, Kamala Harris. And then Senator Shara Brown. What do you make of this? Uh, uh, we've we, got the we've up there of all the new blood. potential we, candidates. And this is what Democrats are saying they want. Democrats keep saying that they've got, you know, Donald Trump on the ropes and Robert Mueller's going to do this and that. And you were just talking about it. They don't really know. They don't really have facts on what's happening in that investigation. And the Democrats are not regenerating their party while they are 
are trying to, you know, press President Trump, they're not coming up with new leaders. They're the same old faces. Go beyond the presidential we've candidates. Heard of like Bernie Sanders. Bernie we've Sanders. Heard of we've heard Clinton. Nancy yeah. Pelosi is still in charge of the House Democrats. Chuck Schumer. They have the same faces. Is that they're not reaching power, Ed. I mean, you've been in Washington a long time. Is that because when you've got power, they're you just don't to, want to relinquish it's it? It's the swamp. They want to grasp power. They want to keep it. Uh, and look, when I have conversations with senior Democrats in Washington, they say two things. One, they can't stand Donald Trump. That's obvious. They do that in public. What they say in private that they don't say in public, they think he's going to get reelected because they don't think senior Democrats that they have anybody who can take him on and beat him. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here to Kevin Jackson show. Fear not. The left know they can't beat Donald Trump. They have no candidate in the bullpen that can beat Donald Trump. And there's nobody that's going to emerge. Be comfortable, but be ready to vote. won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.